10. We have 10 games tonight in the NHL schedule. And what I've done is I've got the, got the standings here. Don't worry. The Eastern standings are on the other side of the board. Um, meaning the other board, of course. Uh, and on the other side of that board. Uh, so looking at the standing, Nashville uh, first in their division at 7-2. and two, Colorado 6-2-2. and two, Wa Winnipeg 6-3-1. and one, Chicago 5-2-2. and two, Minnesota 4-2-2. and two, Dallas 4-4. Four and four, St. Louis 2, 3, and 3. So this is where St. Louis has got themselves up against the wall. Um, St. Louis has got themselves pretty far behind a number of teams. Their hopes of making the playoffs uh, will take a hit the longer this, this lasts. In the Pacific, uh, there's Vancouver at first at 6 and 4. I don't have any idea how that happened. San Jose 5, 3, and 1. Anaheim 5, 4, and 1. Uh, Calgary 5, and 4. Vegas four four and one, Edmonton three three and one, uh, Arizona three and five, and LA two six and one. So LA, it's much the same. They have five points. It's going to take you know some making up ground to get up to where these teams are, and uh, it's it's already at like about a six point range for them. So it's it's going to be interesting to see what happens from here. But if if you're a, a fan, um. Yeah, the, the, the Kings have left themselves in quite the pickle. And I think what this shows as well is just how much uh, parity there really is. Like, you, you look at Edmonton at 3-3-1, and and Oilers fans are still relatively optimistic about this season. So there we go. A um, little bit of something different this morning. Uh, first up, we have the Rangers in against uh, Chicago. Of course, the Rangers not in a fantastic position, and I'll, I'll get to that. But their scoring is Benajad, five goals, four assists, nine points. Um, Zuccarello, two goals, six assists, eight points. It's the attack of the Z's. They are one and two in scoring. Uh, Kreider, four goals and three assists. Pionk with six assists. Jesper Fast with a goal and five, goal, four assists for five points. Uh, Brett Howden, two goals and two assists. Butchnevich with two goals and an assist. And Kevin Hayes with two goals and an assist as well. On the Chicago side of things, uh, Kane has eight goals and five assists to bring it seven goals five assists Taves still with five goals and five assists and then the the goal scoring drops right off Seabrook with a goal and five assists Schmaltz with a goal and five assists Cahoon with a goal and five assists Gustafson with a goal and four assists and there's uh, Duncan Keith at five assists uh, Lundqvist 2.55 goals against 921 save percentage Georgiev 4.58 goals against average 883 save percentage on the uh, Chicago side of things, Crawford 1.69 goals against 946 save percentage, and there's Cam Ward with 4.23 as his goals against average and 885 save percentage. Special teams, well the Rangers win there and don't ask me how. 23.3% uh, power play uh, to the 12.9% on the power play for Chicago. Penalty kill 72.4% for the Rangers, 75% for Chicago. So penalty kill, barely an edge to Chicago. Power play, definitely an edge to the Rangers. But when you look at their overall standings, overall, the New York Rangers are 28th overall in the league, and Chicago is number 8. So for anybody who's like, well, what's those numbers for? That's to show exactly where they are in the standings from 1 through 31. So the Rangers have, have found themselves in a position that we might have expected, and uh, we, we have to ask ourselves... Uh, where exactly is the scoring going to come from beyond a guy like Zibanejad? And Zibanejad's had a nice little run here. Um, make no mistake about it. But again, the Rangers just, it looks like they're they are they are over overwhelmed, for lack of a better term. And, and tonight, now they're in Chicago against the Blackhawks team that's off to a pretty decent start. Next up, um, Columbus. So the Columbus Blue Jackets are in against the St. Louis Blues. Uh, Columbus with Panarin leading them in scoring still. Three goals, six assists. Atkinson at four goals and three assists. Felino with three goals and two assists. Wierenski, two goals and three assists for him. Uh, Nudavara with five assists. Anderson with four goals. Dubois and Duclair both have two goals and two assists to their name. Uh, Columbus, again, one of those teams that can be fantastic one night and look awful the next. And you never really know what you're getting. And tonight they're in against St. Louis, that desperate St. Louis team. Well, they better play desperate anyways. Uh, Ryan O'Reilly, two goals and eight assists. He's been good the last few games for them. 
Uh, Perron, five goals and four assists. Uh, Luke, or Luke, not Luke Shen, it's Braden Shen. Uh, three goals, three assists. Vlad Tarasenko, two goals and four assists. You know, I have to say Tarasenko, of, of the players in the NHL, if, if you're going to make a list of the most disappointing early on, Tarasenko might lead the list. Uh, two years ago, uh, we're all talking about Tarasenko's goal scoring, and there's comparisons being made between him and some of the, the best Russian uh, goal scorers that we've seen, and it really hasn't been there since. Last year, he had a step back uh, statistically, which is understandable. Those things happen, but this year, it looks like there's even more of a step back here. Uh, they've played eight games, and he's got two goals in those eight games. You expect more than that from Tarasenko, uh, and it's it's frustrating to, to watch. It sort of reminds me of, um, I mean, Semin never really had that that goal scoring, not like this guy has, but uh, Semin. Or if you're if you're older, remember Max Afinaganov? Afinaganov when he came in the league, it looked like he was going to be a big scoring star, and he had some good seasons, and then it just stopped. The talent was there, but it just stopped. Um, Alexander Steen, two goals and three assists. Patrick Maroon with five assists. Vincent Dunn with three goals and an assist. And uh, Pareko, two goals and an assist to round out your top eight. Top eight. Goaltending. Corpusalo, 2.95 goals against, 902 save percentage. Bobrovsky, 3.87 goals against, and 872 save percentage. Those numbers are poor, and I mention it every time we do a, Col a Columbus preview, but they're really poor. Especially considering he's in a contract year. He hasn't really thought this through. He's in a contract year, and he's making it easier for Columbus to say, eh, you might not be worth as much as you think. Um, on the St. Louis side of things, Johnson, 3.10 goals against, 903 save percentage. And there's Jake Allen with the 3.64 goals against, 882 save percentage. If I had told St. Louis fans before the season that Jake Allen would be 10 percentage points ahead of Bobrovsky at this point in the season, St. Louis fans would have answered with, good, that means he's off to a good start. Nope. Means he's better than Bobrovsky right now. Uh, power plays, one team has one, and the other one is Columbus. Columbus has a 12.5% power play ranking. St. Louis, 27.8. Penalty kill. One of them is below average, and the other one's St. Louis. 72% uh, penalty kill for Columbus. 82.1% penalty kill for... Or 72% penalty kill for Columbus. 82.1% penalty kill for St. Louis. And those numbers add up to 84.5 for uh, for Columbus, which is bad. That's that's just not going to get it done. Columbus sits 21st overall in the NHL. St. Louis 26th. Both of these teams are supposed to be better than what they are right now, and uh, it it sure feels like um, one or the other, or maybe both, are in for a very long season. St. Louis needs to win this one at home. Uh, against a Columbus team that honestly is very hot and cold. And, uh, yeah, they need to douse them and just make sure they stay on the cold side of things. Um, Nashville. The Nashville Predators out on the road. They're going into New Jersey. The Devils are a curious case in that they, they started off hot. They haven't played as many games as everybody else, but it, it feels to me, and from what I'm reading on, on uh, sports websites, both Canadian and American, that they're starting to get... Um, take it for granted again, which is dangerous with the Devils, and uh, they could very well show Nashville tonight. Uh, Forsberg leads the way on Nashville, scoring with six goals, four assists. Arvidsson with six goals, three assists. Johansson with two goals and seven assists. Ekholm with two goals and five assists. Subban, two goals and four assists. Kyle Turris has a goal and five assists. Ellis with six assists. Craig Smith, four goals and an assist for the Nashville Predators. On the Devils' side of things, Palmieri, seven goals and an assist. Hall with a goal and seven assists. Severson, a goal and four assists. Boyle with three goals and an assist. And, of course, uh, if you were following uh, the sports headlines yesterday, you would have seen that Brian Boyle's cancer is in full remission. Good for Boyle. Congratulations to him. Cancer is, is a horrible, awful thing. Uh, Zajac, two goals and two assists. Heischer, one goal and three assists. Uh, and, and we're kind of waiting on Heischer to take that next step. But there's not a whole lot of pressure on him yet because New Jersey's off to a good start. Butcher with four assists, and there's D with three goals and an assist. Um, goaltending, Rene, 2.11 goals against, 929 save percentage. Saros, 2.37 goals against, 919 save percentage. UC Saros has proven already that, uh, yeah, maybe he is ready to be a starter in the NHL. 
Um, on the New Jersey side of things, Kincaid, 1.55 goals against, 929 save percentage. Nobody else has taken the net yet for New Jersey. And I think New Jersey and Edmonton are the only teams that have yet to play their backup. Um, in one case, the, the goaltender is playing extremely well as a starter. And in the other, in my opinion, they're terrified of playing the backup. Um, and this is the one that has the good starter. On the power play side of things, Nashville's power play is awful. 9.7%. Uh, Jersey's 28.6%. Penalty kill. Nashville, 73.1% on the penalty kill. New Jersey, 88% on the penalty kill. So, if this comes down to special teams, it would appear New Jersey has the edge. But, uh, Nashville's number one overall. New Jersey's number 20 overall. And, of course, the fact they've played six games plays a role in where they are in the standings. But, again, right now, they are 20th. Um, I think that... The, the, the Devils have become a team that's under the radar again because they've lost their last couple of games. And I think that they're capable of knocking off New Jersey. I'm not saying, or knocking off Nashville. I'm not saying that they necessarily will, but they are definitely capable of doing so. Uh, next up, Montreal and Buffalo. Matchup between the surprises. Uh, both of these teams right now playing quite well. And uh, both of them eyeing up a potential playoff spot even though it's still early in the year montreal scoring tatar leads the way with three goals and five assists domi is next up with two goals and six assists petrie a goal and seven assists jeff petrie's been kind of a revelation early this year uh drew uh three goals and four assists right behind paul byron's four goals and three assists gallagher has five goals and an assist lakin and a goal and four assists dano one goal and three assists what's been nice with the montreal run to start the year is spread out scoring. There isn't any one guy that you can you can point at and go, now if we shut him down, we're probably going to stop them from scoring. Now, I don't know how long this lasts. I don't know how 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 um, manageable and, and likely it is for this to continue as it's been, but so far, so good for Montreal. On the Buffalo side of things, Eichel is leading them in scoring with three goals and six assists. Skinner, five goals and two assists. Remember, when he gets hot, makes you forget about the times he's been cold. Uh, Pominville, two goals and three assists. Ocpozo, a goal and four assists. Reinhardt with five assists. Sherry, three goals and an assist. Ristolainen, and a goal and three assists. And Rodriguez, my uh, my favorite member of the Buffalo Sabres in all likelihood. Uh, four assists for him. Goaltending on the Montreal side of things. Niemi, 2.88 goals against, 8.93 save percentage. Carey Price, 2.48 goals against and a 9.06 save percentage. He is inching his way closer to the kind of stats that he's put up for most of his career. And there hasn't been a whole lot of pressure on him to steal games, for the most part. Montreal's playing well at both ends of the ice. Um, on the Buffalo side of things, Omark, 0 0.5 goals against, 982 save percentage. And Hutton, 3.09 goals against, 909 save percentage for him. Special teams, well, they're close in that term. Or in, in, in that realm. However, Montreal's favorite on both sides of it. They're 20.6 on the power play to Buffalo's 17.5. 77.8% 7 on the penalty kill to 71.4 for Buffalo. It's splitting hairs, but at this point in the season, that's kind of what you're doing in almost all these matchups. Montreal, they're number 6 in the overall standings. And for Buffalo, they're number 17. But they can move up with a bullet with a win tonight. And uh, this is a, a big home game for Buffalo. And, you know, after that encouraging road trip through California, this could actually be a good season for the Buffalo Sabres. And and maybe even better than, than what we were talking about before the season started. Uh, Florida's really fallen back. Florida falling back to where they have has left things open for a team like Buffalo to get in there. And Montreal as well. I'm not... Trying to discount Montreal, and I know there's Ottawa fans going, hey, what about us, us too? It is it is a very tight race, and we'll get into that when I put up the other side of the board. But, uh, yeah, this this could be a fun game. This may be the one I end up watching tonight. I would not be surprised if that's the game I end up watching tonight. Um, next up, and, and yes, I realize that I should be watching all the games, and I watch as much as I can, but there's always going to be a game I end up focusing on, which I end up going back to the most and watching the most because it's the most entertaining. Uh, Philly and Boston could be a very entertaining game as well. Uh, Voracek, three goals and nine assists, leads the attack for the Philadelphia Flyers, a team that is also very hot and cold. 
Uh, Claude Giroux, three goals and eight assists. Simmons, six goals and an assist. Lawton with four goals and an assist. Konechny, two goals, three assists. Haig, two goals and three assists. And Sanheim and Gudis both have five assists. So a lot of points coming off that blue line right now for the Philadelphia Flyers. And we'll see how that works against the Boston Bruins, who are lacking in that on the on, on the uh, the blue line. I haven't seen whether or not McAvoy is playing tonight. Uh, I, I assume he probably does, but we'll see. Uh, Bergeron, seven goals, nine assists to lead their scoring. Pasternak, ten goals and five assists. He's had an amazing start to the year. People are finally figuring out what I learned with Pasternak years ago. That the kid has an amazing shot. Uh, Marshan, two goals and eleven assists. Krejci, two goals and six assists. McAvoy, goal and five assists. Grizzlick, five assists. Nordstrom, two goals, and Bjork with a goal and an assist as well. So, Boston is definitely top heavy with their scoring. They need their depth scoring to get get things in motion because when you shut down their first line, there isn't a whole lot after that. We really need Donato to start producing in Boston. Uh, Goaltending. Elliott, 3.59 goals against average, 8.82 save percentage. Pickard, 4.75 goals against, 8.33 save percentage. On the Boston side of things, Halak, 1.74 goals against, 9.33 save percentage. Tuka Rask, 3.38 goals against, and a 9.01 save percentage. P uh, special teams, they favor Boston. Uh, Philly has a 17.6% power play. Boston has a 29.2% power play. Penalty kills, Philly 68.8% and Boston 75% even. Overall standings, Boston sits number 7 overall because they have to be one point behind Montreal when they're good. And uh, they're, the Flyers are sitting at 23rd. And although I've talked about other teams being lower in the standings because maybe they haven't played as many games, Maybe because the standings are just really close this time of year. Philly genuinely has looked like the 23rd best team for the most part this year. Um, they've got to get those defensive numbers in line. Because their offense has been pretty pretty sparkling for the most part. Uh, it's that, it's that, that, that goaltending that's been an issue. And to some extent, I think this is the price you pay with a young blue line. But once again, we'll, we'll see what happens tonight. All right, now the East. Uh, the East is an interesting conference in that you got Toronto in first at seven and three, uh, Tampa at six one and one is second, Montreal's third five one and two, Boston five two and two, Buffalo five and four, Ottawa four three and one, Florida two three and three, Detroit one six and two. So Detroit, yeah, they they look they look done, and Florida's really dug themselves into quite a hole to start the year. Although again, they're only one game below five hundred because of the overtime losses, and there's Buffalo one game above 500. So uh, when overtime loss points are the reason your team misses the playoffs, it stinks. I've had it happen. Um, Metro Division is still being led by Carolina with a 5-3-1 record. Uh, Pittsburgh 4-1-2. Uh, Washington 4-2-2. There's the New Jersey Devils at 4-2. Again, they've played less, less games. Uh, Columbus 4-4. Philly 4-5. The Islanders three four and one, and there are the New York Rangers at three five and one. So let us move on to the next game on the board, shall we? Um, the Anaheim Ducks uh, are in against the Dallas Stars tonight, and this is going to be an interesting one. Silverberg uh, leads the way in scoring, three goals, four assists. Missed their last game. I haven't seen whether he's playing tonight yet or not. Uh, Comtois, two goals and five assists. Lindholm, two goals and five assists as well. Raquel got on the board the last game, which was good news for Raquel. Two goals and four assists for him now in the year. Ben Street, three goals, two assists. Henrique, three goals, two assists. Kessler, three goals and an assist. And Sherwood with two goals and two assists for the Ducks. On the Dallas side of things, Tyler Sagan leads the way with three goals and eight assists. Radulov, four goals and six assists. Klingberg, five goals and three assists. Uh, Jamie Ben, four goals and four assists for him. Spezza, two goals and five assists. Jason Spezza has been off to an excellent start this year. Uh, Shore, one goal and three assists. Connor Carrick, a goal and three assists. And Essa Lindell with three assists for the Dallas Stars. Uh, Anaheim, John Gibson, 1.93 goals against average, 949 save percentage. And there's Ryan Miller with a 2.17 goals against and a 938 save percentage. So those other worldly numbers are kind of sort of starting to come down. On the Dallas side of things, there's Bishop with a 2.38 goals against, 923 save percentage. 
Hudobin, 3.03 goals against, 893, 898 save percentage for him. Special teams favor Dallas. Uh, power play, 19.2% for Anaheim, 33.3% for Dallas. 77.1% penalty kill for Anaheim, 81.8% for Dallas. Overall standings, Anaheim sits at number 12, which is far below where they were a week ago. And it's alarming, but that's kind of Anaheim. Usually they'll fall out halfway through the year. They look like they might be done, and then they go on a big run. I, I would prefer they didn't have to do that this year because it's exhausting. Uh, and then in the first round, they're done. Uh, Dallas, uh, number 22 overall. And they look like number 22 overall. Uh, Dallas has been inconsistent. And Dallas, much like with Boston, looking for more scoring from their depth guys. Although Spezza, Shore look like they're picking it up. And if they can pick that up, maybe things will get better for Dallas. Uh, this this is a game that, honestly, Anaheim really needs right now. Uh, they are sitting at 5-4-1. and one. They are sitting in a spot where they could find themselves out of the playoffs this year. And they they really don't want to be doing that. Uh, not that not that there isn't any pressure, of course, on Dallas after missing the playoffs for what feels like 20, 30, 40 years in a row. It's been a while, and it, it doesn't feel like it's necessarily getting any better. Uh, next up, Vancouver. Uh, the, the, the Canucks are going into Arizona tonight, coming off of a win in, in Vegas last night. So with that shootout win over Vegas, uh, Vancouver likely feeling pretty good about themselves right now, despite the fact that there's a lot of walking wounded in Vancouver's top scorers. Uh, Horvat, seven goals and two assists for him. He had two goals last night, and that's the kind of guy that you know Canucks management's been 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 hold, hoping they've got as their number one center. Here's where the wounded comes in. Patterson, who's been missing, probably doesn't play tonight. Five goals, three assists. I don't. I, I think he went on the road trip. I don't know if he's going to play. Uh, Berchi, who got hurt last night, three goals and three assists. Besser, who sat out last night because he's been hurting, probably playing tonight despite a nagging injury, two goals and four assists. Edler, he got hurt last night, five assists. Uh, Sutter, three goals and an assist. Vertanen, two goals and two assists. Stetcher, a goal and three assists for him to round out the top eight in Vancouver scoring. On the Arizona side of things, we finally have points to talk about which is amazing if you're an Arizona fan. Uh, three goals and two assists for Keller. Vinny Hinnestroza, two goals, two assists. Fisher, on the strength of that hat trick, now has four goals and zero assists. Stepan, four assists. Ekman Larson, four assists. Osterley with three assists. Uh, Dylan Strom with two goals, zero assists. Perlini, a goal and an assist for the Arizona Coyotes. Uh, Nelson leads the way in goal tending between these two teams. Um, I know Kemper has better numbers, but Nelson, I think, has been the better overall goaltender because he's played more games and looked good over a longer period. 2.61 goals against, 914 save percentage. Markstrom, who played well last night, I would imagine sits tonight. 2.93 goals against, 911 save percentage. And on the Arizona side of things, Kemper, as I stated, 1.51 goals against, 953 save percentage. Antti Ranta has had a decent start to the season. Not fantastic, but decent. Uh, 2.32 goals against is pretty good. The 9-11 save percentage, he would probably wish that was a few points higher. Uh, special teams favor Vancouver. Uh, Vancouver's power play is clicking at a 22.2% click. Uh, Arizona's at 13.6%. Penalty kill, 82.5% for Vancouver. 90% for Arizona. When you look at the overall standings, Vancouver is number 9 overall, and Arizona's number 29. So Arizona dug themselves into a hole, trying to dig their way out. They've got a Vancouver team coming in that's on the back end of a back-to-back. -back. This is a, a good night for Arizona, potentially? Sure. Uh, <clears throat> Keller seems to be rounding into form. Henestroza seems to be relishing the opportunity he's been given uh, after being cast off from Chicago. And there is something to uh, the, the, the notion that a player uh, who feels like he's been sort of treated like he's just the extra guy and he's not important, uh, being sent to another team and going, you know what, I, I am important and I'm, I'm going to prove something to them. So Hennis Droza may be on one of those years. I could see him ending up with 20 goals. I don't know how many points, but I could see him ending up with 20 goals, maybe 30, 35 points, or, you know, maybe vice versa. He gets 10 goals, 20 assists, something more in that range. Anyways, he's been solid for them, and Fisher coming off the hat trick, we'll see if he can continue with his solid start to the year. Uh, next up, 
The Washington Capitals are the next challenge for the Edmonton Oilers. So the Oilers come out and they play a very entertaining game uh, and a loss to the Pittsburgh Penguins, which was 6-5 to five in overtime. So for the Capitals, um, they're going into Edmonton tonight, and this could be another high-scoring game. Let's be honest. This could be another high-scoring game on both sides, which won't offend any of us to want entertaining hockey, but it might drive Todd McClellan uh, insane. Uh, if the Oilers have another one of those loosey-goosey type defensive efforts. Um, Ovechkin, eight goals and five assists for him. He's been kind of amazing to start the year. Uh, Kuznetsov, five goals, eight assists. Carlson, five goals, eight assists. Backstrom, two goals and 11 assists. And there's TJ Oshie with five goals and four assists of his own. And then the scoring drops off. Uh, Connolly, a goal and five assists. Eller, a goal and four assists. Jakob Vrana. Two goals and two assists for him as well. So there are a lot of top-heavy teams, and I need to look into that. I need to sit down and, and work the numbers and figure out uh, who's getting the most scoring just from their top line. On the Edmonton side of things, McDavid's five goals and eight assists. Nugent Hopkins, two goals and seven assists. Dreisaitl, four goals and four assists. Nurse, a goal and two assists. Lucic, a goal and two assists. Russell with three assists. Clefbaum, three assists. And Chason with two goals, of course, gets on the board after getting two goals. That was against Pittsburgh. That was against Pittsburgh. He got his two goals. Um, so he's on the board. There you go. Um, goaltending is interesting between these two teams. Holtby, 3.46 goals against 885 save percentage. Copley has a 4.04 goals against 873 save percentage. On the Edmonton side of things, Talbot's been a man alone, an island. 3.15 goals against 891 save percentage. Uh, they've got to give Koskin in a start eventually, right? At some point. No? Okay. Uh, spe special teams are kind of a saw-off. Washington, 38.7% on the power play. Edmonton, 30.4% on the power play. Again, this all these numbers tell you it's going to be a high-scoring game, which means it'll be a 1-0 shutout. 71.9% uh, penalty kill for the Capitals. 76.2% penalty kill for the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, the Capitals sit at number 14 overall, and the Oilers sit at number 24. But, again, the Oilers have only played seven games. There's a lot of teams in the league that have played nine or ten. So we'll see when they make up those games they have in hand, how good they are. But, again, games in hand are only good when you're winning. Uh, and and I, I saw that a lot last year where, okay, this team has a lot of games in hand. They should make... Oh, no, they lost those games in hand. So <clears throat> we'll see what Edmonton does tomorrow night at home against Washington. It's an excellent test. Washington looks like they're starting to round into form. And uh, it, it, this, this could be quite the explosive affair with McDavid on one side, Ovechkin on the other. Let's see him play. Uh, next up, Pittsburgh. So we just mentioned Pittsburgh beating Edmonton. Here they are. Uh, the Penguins are against the Flames. And this is a pretty even matchup. Malkin leads the way in scoring for Pittsburgh with three goals, ten assists. Uh, I like Malkin. People know this. Uh, Kessel, four goals and six assists for him. Latang four goals and five assists. Crosby with two goals and five assists for Pittsburgh. Gensel has four goals. Hornquist, two goals and two assists. Justin Schultz with four assists. And Alexiak with three goals. Alexiak, of course, scoring two goals um, in that last game against Edmonton. So some weird names showing up with multiple goal games in that, in that one. But Alexiak's been an excellent fit on the blue line for the Pittsburgh Penguins. He really has. And we need Ricola to get on the board, too. Uh, on... Calgary side of things, Goudreau with five goals and seven assists. Kachuk, three goals and nine assists. Lindholm, six goals, three assists. Monaghan, four goals and four assists. Giordano with a goal and six assists. Backlund with a goal and five assists. Uh, Froelich with four goals and zero assists. And Brody with four assists on the Calgary side of things. Now, when you're looking at their goaltending, it's deceptively bad for Pittsburgh when you look at just the numbers. Uh, DeSmith, 2.58 goals against. 9.22 save percentage, but he's not the starter. Murray is. Uh, Murray, 3.95 goals against 8.33 save percentage, but those numbers are getting a lot better. So while it looks like Murray's having a trash year, against Edmonton, it wasn't something he's going to you know, want to write home about and, and use that for the Vesna committee, but overall, he's been getting better, and I would expect that to continue tonight. Uh, I don't want to jinx him. I really don't. I may not like Pittsburgh, but I don't like looking at the end of the night and going, man, I said he was going to have a good game. 
Uh, Riddick, 1.83 goals against, 950 save percentage. Smith, 3.38 goals against, 885 save percentage. I would be very interested to see Riddick start this one. It's against Pittsburgh. This is a contending team. Whether we like them or we dislike them, Pittsburgh's going to be a contender until the day they miss the playoffs, as long as they got Crosby and Malkin down the middle. Um, so I'd like to see Riddick against a team with that kind of explosive offense. Uh, special teams favor Pittsburgh. Raise your hand if you're surprised. You're a liar. Uh, Pittsburgh, 27.8% power play. It started to resemble last year's power play. Uh, Calgary at 15.8%. On the penalty kill, Pittsburgh, 84.2%. On the penalty kill, 76.5% is where Calgary resides. Pittsburgh's 13th overall in Calgary. A healthy number 16. So, uh, this is a big test for the Flames. Uh, they can potentially add some ground between themselves and the Oilers. The Oilers are, are going to have their hands full with Washington. So there you go. The, the, the top two Northeastern contenders, even if they're not going to be favored to be the top two in the division by year's end, both in Alberta against teams that are looking to get back in the playoffs after missing last year. I like the scheduling this year. I really do. I've mentioned that before, but I do. I like the scheduling. Not a huge fan of a bunch of teams having games in hand this early in the year, but Part of that's the European tour and just uh, maybe the schedule maker hates Florida. I don't know. Uh, next up. And finally, L.A. in against the Minnesota Wild. Uh, Ayafalo still leads L.A. in scoring with two goals and five assists. Uh, stop me if you've heard that name is number one in their scoring before because he's been number one in their scoring for a while now. And yet he's not scoring at all. So it just shows that nobody else is really picking up the mantle for them either. To Foley, three goals and three assists. Doughty with a goal and five assists. Carter and Kovalchuk both have two goals and three assists for the LA Kings. Um, Kopitar with three goals. Muzzin with three assists. And there's Forbert with two assists. Martinez has two assists as well. Um, LA does have a massive scoring problem. We know this. This is not anything new. I'm not telling tales out of school here. And now they go in against a Minnesota team that's been putting up some goals regularly. Parise, three goals and seven assists. Zucker with four goals and three assists. Uh, Suter with two goals and five assists. Granlin with three goals and three assists. Dumba, two, three goals and two assists. Uh, Eric Stahl, two goals and three assists for him. So Jordan's actually outscoring Eric so far this year, which is strange. Koivu, goal and four assists. Charlie Coyle with two goals and two assists for the Minnesota Wild. Goaltending. Uh, Jack Campbell, 2.80 goals against, 9.17 save percentage. And there's Jonathan Quick at 4.55 goals against, 8.45 save percentage. On the Minnesota side of things, Dubnik, 2.11 goals against, and a 9.44 save percentage. I, I know, everybody thinks he sucks. He doesn't. Uh, Staylock, 3.44 goals against, 8.79 save percentage. Special teams, well, if it comes down to the power play, we may go to a shootout because both teams' power plays have been poor. 10% uh, power play for LA, 13.6% power play for Minnesota. Penalty kill, are they're, number, they're better numbers. LA, 70.8% power, 70.8% penalty kill, which is much lower than we're accustomed to from LA. Uh, and Minnesota, 82.4%. LA sits 30th overall, Minnesota, half of that. They're 15th overall. So if Minnesota can win this game at home against an LA team that looks pretty much lost almost every night, uh, and it, it is team speed. A lot of this is team speed. And, you know, during the summer when they picked up Kovalchuk, I thought that was really odd because this was a team that looked kind of slow in the first round last year against Vegas. And I thought adding Kovalchuk was odd because, yes, Kovalchuk's a decent scorer. He's got two goals and three assists so far in nine games. But he's not, he's not Kovalchuk in his prime. And the, the scoring upside just isn't there and the speed doesn't seem to be there and we're nine games into the season and IFLO is still their highest scorer so that's that's an issue and uh we'll we'll see how it turns out from them they 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 need Kempe to step up and be their scorer I, I guess I don't know it's going to be interesting because there are names on the board there are you know guys like Doughty and Carter Kovalchuk Kopitar you know if slash when Brown returns he, he potentially gives them another shot in the arm. And, and Brown had a fantastic start the last season and had a very good year. But it's a risk to assume that he's just going to get back to that this year. So there you go. Um, Ten games. You're all set. 
Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through you happen upon this video. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm going to go uh, drink some fluids of some sort for, uh, for, for the fact that I've been talking for about 35 minutes straight. Uh, but hey, thank you guys so much for watching, tuning in, for all the liking and the subscribing you guys have been doing. It means a ton. And all the comments below. 99.9% of which are pretty decent. Thanks for that. I'll talk to you again soon.